You're watching World Insights. Coming up on the program, Myanmar's military leaders face striking civil servants and overseas sanctions. Is there still time for a peaceful resolution between protesters and the military? Welcome back. This is World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. The situation in Myanmar has become global concern. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres condemned on Sunday the use of deadly violence in Myanmar, calling on all parties to respect election results and return to civilian rule. And Facebook announced they had deleted the military's main page. China has called on all parties to bring peaceful solution to the country. So what's next and how can the country reconcile differences between different stakeholders? Let's loop in. Our panelists, they have very different perspectives. For more on the latest situation in Myanmar, we are joining Kuala Lumpur, Bridget Welsh, Honorary Research Associate at the University of Nottingham's Asia Research Institute in Malaysia. Thank you for joining us. In Tokyo, Lin Tim Wai, Adjunct Research Fellow from National University of Singapore. Thank you. Last but not least in Beijing, Song Ching Ren, Associate Professor from Beijing Foreign Studies University. Thank you for joining us as well. Let me start by asking about the latest development, particularly international community's reaction. From the UN Secretary General, we have heard uh, the uh, criticism of uh, the violence that's going on. Ms. Welsh, uh, how shall we see the possibility solutions to end the violence, to say the least? The international community needs to engage the military in dialogue uh, to make it clear that the use of violence against pro protesters and civilians is not the best way forward. Uh, this involves not only the international community, but also China. Mm. China have been participating in the UN meeting regarding the Myanmar issue. Tell me more, since China is being mentioned here, Mr. Song, uh, about your take on China's role and fundamentally what is the issue as China sees it? Uh, with China and some ASEAN countries and also uh, other international, uh, other foreign countries, uh, they are trying their, uh, their efforts to uh, to uh, to persuade uh, the Myanmar military, uh, the ARD, and also the uh, some uh, important uh, uh, NGO leaders in Myanmar to uh, negotiate to have dialogues. I think uh, uh, under their efforts, our joint efforts, mm -hmm. uh, both China and ASEAN, mm -hmm. and also our uh, international society efforts, uh, uh, we hope that uh, uh, we can. Uh, promote Myanmar's different parties to conduct dialogue uh, as well as possible. Here's what the Chinese State Councillor Wang Yi said about Myanmar. Myanmar, quote, is a member of the ASEAN family and its domestic situation bears on the building of the ASEAN community and blocks integration process. The problem should be resolved peacefully within its constitutional and legal framework, end of quote. So how are the ASEAN countries, or you're from Singapore originally, part of the ASEAN, looking at the issue, what can be the role of the ASEAN in this regard? Uh, ASEAN as an organization wants to uh, see uh, a peaceful uh, resolution. Uh, some of its members uh, have voiced uh, stronger statements about the uh, use of force. Um, most of the uh, ASEAN members are worried uh, about the uh, repeat uh, of the 1980s uh, incidents uh, or the Saffron uh, Revolution in 2007. Uh, so ASEAN, as you know, uh, works by consensus. Uh, so they have put out strong statements, but at the same time, they are also trying backdoor diplomacy, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get uh, uh, Myanmar back uh, to the table to see if there are any uh, negotiated uh, solutions between the different stakeholders to lower the temperature. Uh, Ms. Welsh, you see the incoming Biden administration has been quite obviously chosen the issue of Myanmar as one on its uh, foreign policy agenda from the very beginning of its term. But many also wonder whether the approach about sanctions will really work. We have seen that being an exercise by the United States elsewhere in the world. Whether that really helped to bring a solution 
or deepening uh, the divide is a big question being debated. Ms. Welsh. Well, I think the Biden administration didn't choose this. Unfortunately, they had to respond to the coup that happened in February. Uh, but I think what we're seeing are a very different type of approach by the Biden administration and previous governments in responding mm -hmm. to Myanmar. Uh, the sanctions are somewhat lower in terms of the scope. They're focused on individuals uh, uh, and, they're, and companies, um, and they're very modest in their actual uh, range. Uh, but they are importantly targeted the sense that they, the Biden administration is coming into this situation, recognizing that sanctions as a, as a broad policy can actually hurt the Myanmar people. So they're focusing on specific individuals. Uh, and they are also working in a very different way, which is to collaborate with different allies mm. um, and, and mm. like-minded uh, partners on the issues of Myanmar. I think yeah. uh, strategically, mm -hmm. the challenge is, is not to have the issue of what's happening in Myanmar be, be, be brought in and as part of a, a kind of competition between the U.S. or China or actually uh, affect other relationships. So I think that there's, there has been some slow movement, um, but it has been uh, a movement that the international community from the West um, has actually been very clear in sort of condemning what has happened and in expressing a, a desire and, uh, and for dialogue and for to lower the temperature has been mm. spoken earlier mm. to reduce the, the pressure mm. uh, inside Myanmar uh, on what is happening uh, on the ground. Right. Uh, Ms. Welsh, uh, no offense here, but very interesting recent incidents, for example, in the capital in the U.S. and also some of the other issues going on about the pandemic and the protests against the pandemic's issues uh, have been uh, making the world a little bit skeptical, if not uh, uh, considering hypocritical about uh, the Western, uh, some of the Western countries' approach uh, and uh, double standards, shall we say, toward their own politics and the politics elsewhere in the world. So how will, do you think, uh, these governments will be able to overcome this skepticism in the world and play a, a role of uh, uh, constructive role, shall we say, in the issue of Myanmar? I think it is correct that the United States has some very serious issues to deal with internally uh, in terms of what's happened in the Capitol and also the legacy of the Trump administration. Mm. And I think also the same mm. issues were relevant for China, the issues in terms of a constructive role. And I think what's important for the situation in Myanmar is how the United States and China and other international actors work to reduce the, the, the violence and mm -hmm. the tension because mm -hmm. these are escalating. Not only have we seen deaths uh, in terms of the protest, we're also seeing concerns about spillovers for rising ethnic conflict. Mm. So I think you're, that mm. skepticism is necessary, uh, but I think that uh, this should not uh, blind us to the, to the focus on trying to address some of the real issues yeah. uh, in Myanmar yeah. itself working collaboratively. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it, I think it is in the U.S. and China's interest together uh, to have a solution that is peaceful in Myanmar. Mr. Lim Tien Wai, uh, Singapore is one of the largest single foreign investors uh, for the year 2019 to 2020 fiscal year in Myanmar, if I get it right. Some of the uh, latest uh, numbers suggest the foreign investment direct FI FDI has been increasing dramatically in Myanmar since the country has been going through some, uh, you know, peaceful period of time. For example, for the year 2012 to 2013, shot up to uh, 1.4 billion in terms of foreign investment. And also from 2015 to 2016, uh, almost uh, 9.5 billion US dollars. Of course, this is helping the economy of Myanmar, also helping the community of ASEAN. And Coming from Singapore yourself, how do you look at, you know, the issues of Myanmar being resolved peacefully so that uh, the foreign investment investors will continue to invest there in Myanmar, which could be a great solution for the country's economy as well? Mr. Lim. The investments from the top three investors in Myanmar uh, has been very strategic in helping the CLMV country catch up with the ASEAN 6. CLMV meaning uh, Cambodia, yeah. Myanmar, Laos and Vietnam yeah. because they are the newer members of ASEAN. And so investments is definitely crucial uh, in helping to 
close the gap between the CLMV countries and the ASEAN 6 countries which developed earlier. So in that sense, the top investors in Myanmar uh, have been very useful in economic development and ASEAN integration. Uh, of course, uh, with the uh, coup happening, uh, many countries are now trying, especially ASEAN countries, are trying to bring Myanmar back uh, into the uh, uh, negotiating table through a backdoor or front door diplomacy mm -hmm. in order to persuade them uh, that the priorities of economic development remains very important. And therefore, uh, as you know, uh, in December 2015, uh, the ASEAN countries have come together to form the ASEAN Economic Community, AEC. Uh, the yes. hope is that uh, it can form a single market uh, in, the, in the near future. And in fact, the process has already started. With mm. more interdependency in economic exchanges, with more interdependency in trade exchanges and even technological exchanges, it is hoped that all countries can play by the regional norms and convention. And so it remains to be seen how uh, ASEAN countries can use innovative ways to defuse this uh, uh, crisis, even if it's not resolution, at least yeah. turn down the temperature and prevent bloodshed. The invent uh, the innovative way. Uh, Mr. Lim, would you like to elaborate a little bit more about what exactly are you trying to refer to? ASEAN has used various methods, uh, including corridor diplomacy during meetings, backdoor diplomacy, closed door di diplomacy, mm -hmm. soft power, gentle persuasion and economic uh, you know, exchanges in order to defuse crisis in the past. China has been declared very clearly that it has good relationship both with the military in Myanmar and also with the political party, as well as uh, Ms. Aung San Suu Kyi, who visited China several times over the past few years. So how is China going to be able to keep that balance among different factors inside Myanmar politics and bring the country together with others out of the current crisis? Uh, outsiders' uh, actions or their policies on Myanmar now uh, should not to exaggerate or escalate mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to make the Myanmar situation to be escalated. A uh, constructive way is that uh, our uh, the outsider actions, the international actors actions, should be uh, useful to resolve the Myanmar's uh, irritation. Mm -hmm. uh, should be useful to mm -hmm. help Myanmar to stick um, to uh, conduct dialogues uh, and the uh, reconciliation as soon as possible to help Myanmar to decrease the temperature of the situation. How are countries uh, relevant in this issue going to make their utmost effort to make sure Myanmar is not going to be a battleground of major powers, but rather a issue in which they could work together constructively to set a good precedence for the future? This is a very loaded question. I know it's a big one. Nobody has the solution now, but I do want to invite your expertise uh, to begin with. Ms. Welsh. In order to address these issues, you have to make, make sure that the dialogue is not just with Myanmar itself, but among the international players. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that it is a country that is facing an unprecedented political crisis from the perspective um, uh, of the younger generation of people inside Myanmar, who, many of which who are coming out onto the streets to protest. Uh, it is a situation where the country historically was seen to be moving forward um, towards economic development, um, some sort of political stabilization, a more open situation politically, and these things have really fundamentally changed. Mm. So it is not, it becomes a issue about the region because it involves the, the status of Asia uh, when attention is being focused on a country such as Myanmar. Mm. Uh, and I think this is why there needs to be this kind of uh, multiple third party type of discussions uh, between ASEAN and China, between the United States and China, um, and between in Japan, because Japan has a very good relationship with, with in Myanmar longer term. And so uh, I think that this is involved multiple stakeholders. Yeah, Mr. Song, what about from your perspective? How to make yeah. sure that this will be a good precedence set 
for resolving some of the most thorny issues in the world, particularly with major powers involved? Uh, now, uh, uh, different inter inter international stakeholders have different automotive in Myanmar uh, uh, issue. Mm -hmm. So uh, now it's very uh, urgent for uh, different stakeholders to uh, have uh, dialogues or have consultations uh, and to make joint efforts to persuade uh, Myanmar's different stakeholders to uh, get to the uh, negotiation table yeah. to reach, yeah, to reach the reconciliation. Now it needs the international societies joint efforts and uh, quickly. Is it happening? Uh, both the China and the ASEAN, ASEAN countries and uh, also other stakeholders are uh, uh, their uh, officials have uh, the tele uh, telephone uh, uh, calls and exchange of views, and also uh, ASEAN uh, has said it wants to uh, conduct a special uh, foreign ministers a meeting to talk about the Myanmar uh, issue and to help Myanmar to resolve the the, uh, the terrible situation. Mr. Lim, your take on that? Uh, yes, uh, indeed. Uh, fortunately, on this issue and this crisis, all international stakeholders appear to be on the same page. Uh, they use different methodologies to reach out to uh, Myanmar. Uh, for example, uh, in the case of uh, Russia and China, uh, they do have very good traditional relationship with the Tatmadaw, which is the uh, Myanmarese uh, military. Uh, for In the case of uh, Japan, it has very good in, uh, economic relations with Myanmar. And uh, you can see that uh, the uh, Japanese government have also mentioned that uh, it is uh, important not to isolate uh, yeah. the uh, government uh, from the international community. Uh, some of its uh, private sector uh, companies have also made symbolic withdrawals. In the case of uh, ASEAN, as I mentioned before, uh, a lot of corridor diplomacy, backdoor diplomacy. Uh, in the case of the US, uh, which is uh, playing a very important role as well, many in uh, the region are relieved uh, that the sanctions are targeted and limited. I know it is a very important developing story in this part of the region, but for now I want to thank all of you for your insights and comparing notes, which is extremely important for the working spirit on the issue. Thank you so much, every one of you. Bridget Welsh, Lim Tan Wai, last but not least, Song Ching Ren. Really appreciate it. Thank you. That's the latest discussion about situations in Myanmar. And that's all the time also we have for today. If you'd like to see more Search World Insights, check out our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of the team, thanks for watching. 